we added this Yakima awning. It was a really nice add-on. Definitely cuts down on the heat of the day when we're sitting out. And we're able to sit outside when the weather's not so nice. Welcome back to the community, everybody. And thank you all for being part of this large club. I really appreciate it. And I hope everybody's been enjoying the videos. I'm trying to throw in extra things once in a while as an added on video, just for your enjoyment and uh, for the fun. Also, I did want to bring up, uh, somebody said something in the comments recently and I forgot about it. So it's back out. I did buy the clock mechanism for it. So I'm going to sand paint, turn it into a clock with a light glowing on it for pretty much wall art. I have nowhere to put it, but I promised the video and I'll do it. So that will be getting done soon. Today, I want to announce something really cool, and that would be dubs and dogs. And here's a little bit about it. Now, try not to miss this one. It's the eighth annual dubs and dogs, and it is Saturday, July 8th in West Virginia at the Briggs Annual Adoption Center at Charlestown, West Virginia. Lots of air cold and some water pumper turnouts. And I hope some of you can attend that. And if you can, please leave a donation down in the description. There's a safe, secure link to PayPal that helps keep this channel going and supply the necessary things needed. Okay, so what do we have today here? Dino, a very good friend of ours, had sent in an interview with his 1971 bus. So let's take a look at it, and I'll be back at the end of the video. I hope you all enjoy. Take it away, Dino. Thanks, Slade. Hey, club members. Dino here. Today we're going to be doing something really special. We are going to be doing a walk around tour of our 1971 Volkswagen Westfalia Campmobile we call the Pickle. Anyways, I hope you guys enjoy this. Come on, let's, let's check it out. So what exactly is it? Well, this is a 1971 Volkswagen Type 2 transporter that was factory built by Volkswagen to be converted to a camper by the Westfalia Corporation. The reason I say that is because a lot of these were actually brought to the United States as passenger buses or panel buses and converted over with the pop tops and the jealousy windows and all that sort of thing. This one was actually built by Volkswagen with proper reinforcements and everything and sold at Volkswagen dealerships to be a Westfalia camper. So yeah, let's take a look around. So the front end is typical for an early bay window. This is what's called a low light bus, which means the turn signals are mounted below the headlights. On the later models, the turn signals would actually be positioned on either side of the air vent right above the spare tire. This bus, we've mounted the spare tire in the front that actually was not from the factory. That was a very popular optional accessory. Uh, we did it so we have more room inside. And of course, our high fidelity shortwave pickle tenna. 1971 was a year of first, one of them being disc brakes and a smaller five bolt pattern than the original wide fives as seen on the early bays and the split windows. It also has not just disc brakes, but vacuum operated power disc brakes. It really stops like a modern vehicle. This bay window, as my other bay window truck, is equipped with the correct 185 14C tires. The C is very important because so often, and this bay window is no exception, these buses are found to be riding on car tires and that is just not safe. They cannot support the weight properly. You really need at least an eight ply tire. So make sure you get something with a C rating at a minimum. And of course, no camper bus is complete without a vintage Coleman 1966 228 F model gas pressure lantern and she works and glows wonderfully. One of the more obvious differences between our bus and a passenger bus is this wonderful fiberglass pop top. It has mesh windows as well as a removable mesh door at the top that gives you easy access to the cargo area. The top pops up to a little over six feet tall and it actually has a little cot that you can fold open that has a weight limit of around 100 pounds for a toddler or a young adult. We added this Yakima awning it's a really nice add-on. Definitely cuts down on the heat of the day when we're sitting out. And we're able to sit outside when the weather's not so nice. 
Now here's an interesting feature a lot of you might not know. This fiberglass area in the back is not just part of the roof. In fact, it's not really much of a roof at all. So you've got this ladder here that was added by the previous owner. And if you go up here, there's actually a storage area. And what you're seeing is the metal roof. And we've put some truck bed liner on it to make it a little more durable for putting cargo. It's accessible either via this ladder or, as you can see, the slightly open door up there that can be unzipped. We've got these lovely jealousy windows which are just like your grandma used to have on her porch. They have a nice screen inside and you can open them up and they definitely let a very nice breeze in. These actually fit in place of the standard sliding windows. You could actually take these out and put a standard window in here, no problem. Or vice versa if you have one not equipped with jealousy windows. Now, a lot of people ask about this little vent thing here. It actually is a female plug. You can flip that open for a standard extension cord. And there's actually a little 110 outlet inside the bus with a small circuit breaker. And you can plug in, you know, phone chargers or a small fan or something like that. So if you ever see one of those hanging off the side, that's what it is. Quick little interior video. So once again, pretty standard stuff. If one thing you will notice, we don't have any heater controls because we run a diesel heater in the winter. So we also have a voltmeter there. Got a little Soundcore Motion Bluetooth boom box that handles the tunes. A little cubby there where the radio used to be. Standard four speed shifter. Tiny steering wheel once again because I'm a healthier size fella. Got the original kind of banged up headliner. I just won't get rid of it. Got these nice seat covers. They're made for a CJ5 low back Jeep. Fit pretty good. Got these ABS door panels from Worksburg. They're available on eBay. Really great guy out of Arizona. We uh, had a problem with our factory turn signal. Instead of spending $200, I installed one of these $20 hot rod ones. It works pretty good. It doesn't look the greatest, but you know, gives us turn signals. And of course, the yodeling pickle. And here we have the interior of the pickle, complete with a baby Avery. We have our little catalytic heater. We have our factory Westfalia cot that we've added a little tent to, so Avery's safe while sleep. Got the dinette. Got the pop top. Does have the upper cot. We use the front here for storage. The folding bed. And we've gotten rid of the wardrobe on this one for more room and actually added this little shelf here that we put pillows on whenever we sleep at night for more room. So we do have some nice storage under here. When you lift this up, you actually, we've got our toolbox. We've got some uh, plates, an extra hoodie, some thermocell mosquito killer things. And, uh, you actually could still access it with the seat down from under here. See the tool bag and the drill and stuff like that's all accessible. So yeah, it's a nice little storage. So this is the bed, the rear bed. There's actually a cushion under there in the back, currently covered by pillows and things like that. So I'm gonna open it up and show you guys what the bed looks like open, and then show you how you can actually close it with one person. Okay, so pardon all our mess back there. Like I said, this is a very lived in bus, but here is the jackknife bed has these little brackets down here that hold it in place. And I'm gonna show you how to actually fold it up with one person. Okay, so the first thing you do is you pick up the bottom part here, you grab this little lever here, clip that in, then you just push it forward and boom. Now you've got a couch folded up.
we have a slightly bigger than stock motor. So we run these little plexiglass pieces called ears. There's the company. I believe they're made in Great Britain. Not very expensive, and they just suck in a bunch more air down the air intake here down to the engine. And uh, they seem to work pretty well. We did notice a definite decrease in temperature when we installed them. There's also one on the other side, and you know, they can be removed by hand without any tools in just a couple minutes. And to the motor. So this motor isn't very pretty, I'll admit it. But we do run the heck out of this bus. We take it camping quite a bit, and a lot of that is actually spent off-road. So it's a little dirty and dusty, as to be expected. Now, this motor is a 1641, a little bit bigger than a 1600. I guess it makes probably around 65, 70 horsepower. Stock would have been about 60. Uh, it's a dual port motor, which is of note because 1971 was the first year of the dual port engine before it would have been a single port motor. It has an alternator for a little bit better power for our electrical system. Other than that, it's pretty well stock. It has a West German Solex 34 pick three carburetor that was rebuilt by Volksbits. It works awesome. Check Tim out at volksbits.com. And it also has an O34 distributor, uh, proper vacuum advance, really helps uh, keep that flat spot away. It has a factory oil bath air cleaner. But one thing we do have in here is a blaze cut fire suppression system. It is a fire extinguisher system and it is a big plastic tube that is under pressure and has a low flash point. So if flames hit it or it gets too hot, it will melt and boom, explode fire extinguishing all over the engine. Uh, I know a couple people have had them go off due to a legitimate fire and it was very effective. It makes a big mess, but you don't end up with a burned down bus. So yeah, there you have it. There's the power plant of the pickle. All right, folks, well, that sums up the tour of our 1971 Volkswagen Westfalia Campmobile. We hope you enjoyed touring the pickle as much as we enjoyed making the video about the pickle. We've got Avery over here bouncing her little butt off and her little bouncer. And we've got a beautiful sunset forming. So until next time, we look forward to seeing you in our next videos we got coming up with some other cars in our collection. Adios. That was awesome, Dino. Thank you so much, my friend. And I think next week, possibly, Dino's going to be doing his Mexican Beetle for us, which will be a lot of fun. It's a really nice car, so I'm looking forward to that as much as you folks will also. Okay, we had a lot of fun doing that today. I hope everybody enjoyed it. 
yes, we still have to finish our guide rails and seals. I'm actually working on it as we speak, and then I got to merge the video all together just for drying times for everything. So I didn't want to break it up into 20 videos. Uh, if you have a vehicle, a Beetle, Gia, Fastback, Bus, whatever, Doom Buggy, and you want to show it on here, get in touch with me at my email and we'll get together and make it work out and you can send me the video to my Google Drive very easily and we can get you on the club community channel here. Everybody have a wonderful, wonderful day. Thank <laughs> you.